I expect uh, that sustainable pro procurement will become more and more the standard, the right thing to do. So how we procure is we create value for society. And by doing that, we need to procure safe. Uh, we need to take care of national security. We need to take care of uh, international social conditions. So we don't want child labor, etc. But also, I don't think that we want CO2 emissions if we can prevent them. And of course, it's always a balance in public procurement. We have many objectives that we um, need to take care of when we procure something. But I think more and more the attention will decrease on the price factor and will more go to the quality factor and the environmental and social conditions. We're not there yet. If you look at the European tenders um, in Europe, almost half of these tenders are lowest price tenders. And I think this percentage is very high because it's much more difficult to procure sustainable if you focus a lot on price because externalities uh, are not always considered by taxes and, uh, and other measures. So this, this, uh, this is an important trend, I think, that um, it will become less voluntary. And another trend that I hope will pick up, but I don't see it yet, um, is that currently uh, it kind of seems that the attention to sustainable public procurement and the message that we do did we use to, uh, to realize it is focused on minimum requirements and award criteria. So those are two important uh, things. So requirements are, let me say to suppliers, you need to do this. And award criteria can, you can use in supply selection models uh, to select supplies. So these are, of course, important measures, techniques. But there are more things we can do. So we can buy as a service. And by uh, doing that, um, it changes our procurement models. So even without award criteria, without requirements, we can uh, largely impact uh, supplier models that are, can be more uh, sustainable, have a better effect on our client. Because one of the things that you do when you buy as a service is we change ownership. In, uh, currently, we often procure things and then become owners of the things that you buy. But then there is an incentive for suppliers to sell as much as possible. But if the supplier remains the owner, uh, there is a strong incentive for the supplier to make uh, the products long lasting and to, to make them better repairable. And uh, if the product is really used, uh, then it's easier for the supplier to take it back and to make something else with it to keep, to keep the value of it. So um, this is this one example and then much more things that we can do. And I hope these um, other measures will also get the attention that they need so that we don't focus too much only on award criteria and requirements, but also on things such as uh, procurement models. And another nice example is from our Ministry of Defense. They bought cleaning services. Uh, you can imagine for the defense department that that's, there's a lot of cleaning to do. Um, and they selected suppliers almost only based on sustainable and social aspects. So price was much less important and quality also. And uh, the, the, the ministry stated, well, quality is of course important, but we can tackle that with, with certain minimum requirements. And in practice, we don't see that much differences in quality between suppliers that we that, that can are able to supply to uh, a large uh, ministry such as defense. So quality is not making large differences, but sustainability, social aspects, they do. So this is also an example of buying second hand. Um, that's something else than award criteria or minimum requirements. Right? That's that your procurement model changes a lot. And it can also have a large impact on uh, yeah, the things that we, that we procure. And the same is our concepts such as sharing. So we see that more often already for consumers, so sharing cars or sharing bikes or, uh, or other um, equipment. It's also an interesting concept for governments to, uh, to look at. So if you don't buy all of the, the same things, but we share more often where, where that's possible, it can also have a large impact on the climate. I, I hope it becomes a new trend. Um, we don't have the numbers yet because I think we measure um, the wrong things in pop procurement. So many of the things that we measure 
are focused on uh, traditional things that were um, uh, important, such as what type of procedure do we do? And so do we use award criteria? But we never measure, do you buy second hand or new? We don't measure, do you buy as a service or do you buy a traditional? Uh, so, uh, or do you uh, share this, this item with other municipalities or other ministries? Um, so that's more difficult um, to, to see how often this happens in practice. Uh, I do hope that these concepts will pick up. Also because suppliers will start offering them more often. Them more, more often. Uh, so it's um, a thing that you can change from the demand side, but also from the supply side. If we um, make it obligatory for governments to use certain minimum requirements, the risk is that the requirements are set at a very low level because everyone should be able uh, to uh, satisfy them. And especially if you do this on European level, it means that more developing European countries uh, will have the same minimum requirements as the more developed European countries. Uh, so that might make us a bit lazy. It, may make my, it might make markets uh, lazy. Um, so that, 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 that's a potential problem. And another potential problem is if you uh, don't understand the minimum requirements or what the effects will be on competition, it could be that we limit competition too much. So on the one hand, it can make us too lazy. And then there can be uh, too much competition, so everyone can participate. We can also limit it if you set the standards too high. Um, so those are things we need to take into account. And an important uh, solution to tackle this are market consultations. So talk with suppliers, what's possible, um, share your ambitions uh, so that suppliers know um, how they should develop their products for the future. And I think that's crucial uh, for making this transition to a more circular and sustainable um, uh, Europe. I think the world of public procurement, and that's that's a problem in Europe, but also worldwide, is it's quite closed. We work a lot from our desks, and we don't interact that much with uh, companies. And there are reasons for this, huh? because the risk is if you talk too much with companies, um, uh, it hampers certain principles, such as equal treatment. Um, I think we can, especially if you have a professional uh, procurement uh, department, we can tackle these things. We can talk with suppliers without giving them a head start for new tenders um, and by writing reports, what they shared in the market consultation to be very open on it so that everyone that didn't participate in the market consultation still um, can participate in the tender without having a very serious disadvantage because they didn't participate in talks before the tender. And I think these talks are very important because if you want to change supply, if you want to change business models, well, we need to talk with suppliers to give, to give them some time uh, to change or to develop or to innovate. So um, more um, talking, more interaction with suppliers, with industry stakeholders, I think is very important. Uh, and again, the academic world can help with guidelines in this regard and uh, with, with laws and with um, in the indicating what is effective and what's not. First, on the first side, public procurement is not that interesting to our students. But if I talk to my students about uh, creating a better world, with sustainable public procurement, or circular public procurement, and changing behavior, uh, having a large effect if you talk about a market uh, of two to three trillion euros a year for whole Europe, that's, that's what we procure each year, students get more interested. And especially the sustainability aspects um, and the social aspects that they, they take attention. And uh, then they, they see, OK, we can have real impact on the world with uh, how we procure as governments. And it can have all kinds of leverage effects. Um, so that, that's um, makes our profession more interesting for students. And because I, I think, and that's also linked to your question, the awareness uh, of this yeah, is also higher on students than when I was a student. In my days, it was 
less of an important topic compared to what we see with the students now. And uh, students right now, they also buy their clothes secondhand. They think more about the food that they procure and how much meat they eat and what effects are that. And um, of course, our students still show behavior which is unsustainable. It's, it also applies to me. I also have certain behavior that's not sustainable. But I think there's more awareness and there's also more uh, sustainable behavior overall compared to what it was in the past. That really shows um, the importance of the role of the government. So if the government doesn't procure sustainable and social, uh, that gives more motivation for citizens such as me. Well, if the government is not procuring sustainable by itself, why should I do that? Why should I change my car? Why um, do I need to change my behavior if the municipality is just focusing on lowest price? And um, if I see the cars, the, the, the buses, for instance, in public transport, they're all uh, old diesel buses, uh, not even uh, bio uh, diesel uh, is being used. So setting an example as a government is very important. Also, because I think as governments, we have enough money. So I, I mentioned the number of two to three trillion euros a year. I don't think that money is that much of the problem. That, that's so much money. We can do so much things with this money um, that you can also buy sustainable and circular if markets are already up to it. So the, but that, that's, of course, different for citizens. Not everyone can afford an electric car or um, um, go to um, of use other sustainable measures, for instance, for your for your own house. Uh, but it is more possible, and especially in developed countries, the, the most developed countries in Europe, uh, to do that from uh, a government perspective. And in the end, I also think the business case is positive. So uh, maybe right now we would pay more if you buy circular uh, items, but in the, whole, in the end, the whole life cycle, it may reduce costs. And uh, this won't be the case for everything. So um, fuel, for instance, said that or uh, that might be, um, uh, or electric cars, let, let's say it like that, they might not, might, might be more expensive than uh, traditional cars. But in the end, because of, for other products and services, we can save money. If you buy secondhand office furniture, we save money. And last but not least, the people in Europe are also very open to it. I think, uh, I don't know the exact percentage, but I think in a recent survey among EU citizens, 91% uh, of them said if the government procures, it's fine to pay a bit more if it's sustainable. So many citizens might not be able to do it for themselves, but they do expect it from the government to procure uh, sustainable. And by doing that, I think we can set the right example. 